This question asks us to determine the nitrogen level that gives the quote best yield. Now presumably the best yield would be the one that is maximized. So we're trying to basically maximize the value of the yield y. And in order to do that, we need to take our function and we need to calculate its derivative. Now remember, y is the yield and then your variable is n, the nitrogen level in the soil. So keep in mind that your variable is n. The k is a positive constant as noted in the question. So let's write down our function again and then we want to start thinking about what sort of method we would use to compute the derivative of this function. Now of course we all notice here that this is a quotient. We have a function in the numerator divided by a function in the denominator and because it's a quotient we have to use the quotient rule. Now one way of doing the quotient rule is to let f equal the function in the numerator. So that would be kn and then you let g equal the function in the denominator, which would be one plus n squared. Next, you need the derivatives of these functions. Again, remember your variable is n. k is a constant, so the derivative of kn would just be k. And then the derivative of one plus n squared would be zero plus the derivative of n squared, which of course is two n. Zero plus two n is just two n. So these are the four components we need for our quotient rule. Now, the formula that we could use for the quotient rule is as follows. It's what I call fig minus gif all divided by g squared. So we're just going to plug in the four components into that equation to get the derivative. So here we go. We could call the derivative y prime. We start out with f prime. And if you look at our template above, we know f prime is k multiplied by g, which was one plus n squared and then minus g prime, which was 2n, multiplied by f, which was kn. And then this is all divided by the g squared. g was 1 plus n squared, so we'll have 1 plus n squared quantity squared. Now we want to simplify, and in the numerator we could distribute this k. So k times 1 is k, k times n squared is kn squared. And then over here we have 2n times kn, that's going to be a 2k n squared. And now we can see we have some like terms right here. We have 1k n squared minus 2k n squared. That would be a minus 1k n squared altogether. In the numerator, we have a greatest common factor of k. So we're going to factor that out. We have k multiplied by the quantity 1 minus 1n squared. And now we're left with something that can factor. 1 minus n squared, we know that is the difference of two perfect squares. So that would factor as 1 plus n times 1 minus n. And this is the final form of the first derivative that we need to help us maximize the value of the yield. Now, once you have your derivative, you're supposed to find where the derivative is equal to zero or where it is undefined. Now, in this case, where the derivative is equal to zero would be based on where the numerator is equal to zero. So we're just gonna take a little aside here and we're gonna set the numerator equal to zero. And to solve that, we would perhaps just split this three ways and set each factor equal to zero. Now this would say k is equal to zero. Well, that's not true because k is a positive constant. Zero is not positive, so we can throw that out. Over here, we would have one plus n is equal to zero. Solving that gives us n is equal to negative one, but that doesn't make sense either because n represented the nitrogen level. I don't think you can have a negative nitrogen level. It doesn't make any sense. So we'll get rid of that as well, and then one minus n is equal to zero. Solving this gives n equals one. Now we don't know if this maximizes the yield yet, but it is a critical number, and we're going to explore whether it does maximize yield. Now we mentioned that not only would the derivative equal zero, you also have to check where the derivative is undefined. In this context, undefined would mean that the denominator would equal zero. Remember, you cannot divide by zero to make any mathematical sense, so we would take our denominator and set this equal to zero. Not sure what happened there. And again, this is to figure out where the derivative would be undefined. You would square root both sides of that. This gives you one plus n squared is equal to zero. Subtract one from both sides and then take the square root. But now you have a weird problem here. You have the square root of negative one. Well, of course that's equal to plus or minus i. 
I don't think we are interested in imaginary values for nitrogen levels in this context. So we can get rid of all of that. The only critical number, therefore, is going to be n equals 1. But let's make sure that that indeed maximizes yield by looking at the first derivative test. Now on the first derivative test, we take our critical number, plot it on a number line, and then we pick a value that's less than that critical number as well as greater than it. Perhaps, for example, we could choose n is equal to 1 half, and then on the other side, we could choose n is equal to 1.5. Now, we can take a bit of a shortcut here, because if we look at our derivative, it's kind of split up into a bunch of dif different factors. But check this out. k we know is positive, because the question said so. This term down here must also be positive, because it's getting squared. Anything we square turns positive. And then 1 plus n is also positive, because n is a positive number. So if you take a positive number and then add 1 to it, it's still positive. So the only factor that can vary in terms of positive and negative is this right here. Now, if we were to plug in our first test value of 1 half, we would have 1 minus 1 half. That, of course, would give us a positive outcome. So this shows us that the derivative is positive in this little interval. And if the derivative is positive, that means the yield function is going up. On the other side, if we plugged in 1.5 into this 1 minus n, we would have 1 minus 1.5. That would be a negative result, and therefore the derivative is negative in this subinterval. That means the yield function is decreasing or going down. So look what we have, a maximum right there. At n is equal to 1, the yield is a maximum. And so according to the first derivative test, y is maximized when n equals 1. And that indeed is the final answer to the question. If for any reason you had to figure out the actual yield when n equals 1, then of course you'd have to backtrack, go all the way back to your yield function, and plug 1 in for n. So I suppose we could do that as an exercise. We would have k times 1, which is just 1, over 1 plus 1 squared. 1 squared is 1. And the bottom, you would have 1 plus 1, which is 2. So the maximum yield would be k over 2 for those interested, but the actual nitrogen level that maximizes the yield was n equals 1.